it's Amanda and today I am showing you how to play listening lemurs. With this game you will get three different sets of cards. You'll get perfect, minor, and major. This is an ear training game that will help your students identify these different intervals. What you get with this game is the game board. There are 21 of each major, minor, and perfect cards. You also get full game instructions that you can read. I will also tell you how to play in this video if you're not much of a reader. You also get eight lemur game pieces that you can cut and when you cut them, you can fold them and then they will stand up on the game board like that. Also included in this are several teacher aids. So first you have the teacher guide. These have different intervals that you can play. There's perfect, major, and then minors. And um, some of these are in harmonics. So if you don't like reading sharps, then you can read the flats. So if you ever see something that it gives you an interval, then it gives you the in harmonic. These are the same pitches on the piano, but you can choose which one you prefer to read. So this will give you plenty of options to use. And what I would recommend you do as you use these is uh, play them in different octaves. And you can also, they're all written ascending, but you can also play them backwards descending. Also included are listening lemurs interval recognition. There are two pages of these. So these are, um, they give you different little tunes. So like unison is jingle bells. So you can get your students to think jingle bells. And it's like, that's a unison. If they're thinking Jaws themes, do, do, that's Jaws themes. And then baby sharks, do, do. There's an ascending major second. And they also have the descending notes that you can use as well. So there's plenty of options here to help your students identify which intervals are which. When your student has completed the game, they can take a picture with the success poster that you can post on your social media. Be sure to tag us at Music Game Club and we will be happy to celebrate with you. Finally, there are activity sheets that you can send home with your students. Now, this is all. these are all the same. There's just one of them, but you can print out as many copies as you need and um, your students can color the lemurs and then they can also write the intervals above each note. Now you can change these instructions. If you want to use this more than one week, you can you know, change it and be like, okay, this week I want you to write the interval below, or you can do like, I want you to write all minor intervals or all major and perfect intervals or whatever. So um, there's several different ways you can use this if you want to be creative with it. The game cards. So you have move forward one space, which is, let me grab a game piece and show you. So yeah, if you had that one, then if your student drew that, they would just move forward one. And then if they have move forward two spaces, they would move forward one, two. Move forward three spaces, one, two, three. Move back one space. Bonus, move forward four spaces. There's very, very few of these. One, two, three. Four. Return to start. Yeah, that's a really fun one. There's only one of these cards. And so then they would return to start. Stop and eat. Do not move forward. Now, if they're on the starting position, that just means they don't, they don't move anywhere. Swap places with the player to your right. I believe there's right and left. So if this person got it, then these two people would swap places, which would be very beneficial for one and probably not very beneficial for the other. So um, again, there's not that many of those cards in there, but those are some of the fun cards that we have. Um, so let's learn how to play it. All you need to do to set up the board is just lay down the board. You will want to shuffle all of the cards and then you can have your students pick which lemur they want. I'm going to play with two players you can play with up to six players. There's six different places. Also included in the game download is a poster size of the game board. So if you need a little bit more space around your game board and wanna put it on a table and have your kids not quite so crowded together, you can print a larger game board. So I'm going to pick this lemur and it doesn't really matter where you place them and then I'll pick this lemur. So I'm gonna just do one on each side of the game board. Okay, so I will use the teacher guide that I mentioned earlier. And this one, I'm just gonna keep them in the same octave. I do recommend you doing them in different octaves, but just so I can show you how to play the game and also because I'm using my iPad and it's hard to scroll on different octaves. But if you're using a real piano, it should make it pretty easy. What I do is I just will mix up if I'm doing major, minor, or perfect. 
Now, a way you can play this, I'll just mention it quickly, is if you're wanting to teach your students, here's what a major sounds like, here's what a minor sounds like, here's what a perfect interval sounds like, then you can just do those cards. But they would have to identify like, oh, that's a major third, that's a major six, that's a major sevens or whatever. So there is that alternative way to play if you need to ease your way and, and use this to teach your students what these intervals sound like. But let's pretend that they do know what all these major, minor, and perfect intervals sound like. So I'm gonna mix up which intervals I play and whether they're descending or ascending. Choose an interval and you'd play it. And if you want, your students can sing it back and do, do, and you know, like baby shark, you know, that's a major second. So whenever they know that it's a major, then they're like, oh, it's a major. And um, you can decide if you want them to identify the interval or not. So they'll pick it. So we're gonna go, this guy's player one. So he moves forward one. And then player two draws. Stop the neat, does not move. So with this, if you notice, it does give it away if one student knows what it is. So what you might wanna do is like count to five so they all have time to think about it and then they can say, oh, it's major. But what this does do is it does encourage the students to learn it still, even if they're learning it off of other players, because they're still listening and hearing the pitches and then they're identifying what it is or they're seeing it identified. So I think it's a win-win both ways. Let us do another interval. All right, that's a perfect fifth. So player one moves forward one. Player two stops the need. I did not do this on purpose. All right, another interval. Minor six. Player one moves forward two. Player two moves forward one. I'm gonna do a descending one. All right, that's a minor second. Player one stops the need, doesn't move forward. Player two gets to move forward two spaces. One, two. Major third. Player one moves back a space. Player two moves forward three spaces. That's a descending perfect fourth. Player one bonus moves forward four. Two moves back one. That, of course, is a perfect unison. Player one, player two. Ooh. Yeah, there are not very many move back two spaces, but there are some. Minor third. Player one, one, two, and they've won. All right, but if you wanted to keep going and do player two, one, two, three, and then you could finish out the game if you wanted to. You can decide penalties. If they guess something wrong, then they can stay in the same spot and not move forward, or they can move backward one. That's up to you. It depends on how challenging you want it to be. We were afraid that if you did do like move back, then it will give them too much of a disadvantage and be too discouraging for the student. But if you do want them to learn and to grow in their knowledge and not just like say, oh, that's major, oh, that's minor, and, and get it wrong just because they're guessing, then you can do, hey, if you guess it wrong, you can't move forward. So that could be helpful if you have some students who aren't even really trying to learn it, but this is the gist of the game, you know? They, they just listen, they identify major, minor, perfect, they pick a card and move, and there you go, they're learning their intervals and have a great time while they're doing some ear training.